Yo, what is up, guys? Oh my god, I'm not gonna start like that. <laughs> sorry, uh, sorry, Phase Evolution. I didn't mean to steal your intro. Yo, guys, what's going on? This is Kyle with Explore the Adventure. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, you know, I haven't uploaded anything in a while. It's been about two months. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, let me give you an update on, you know, what's been going on in my life lately and what I've been up to and what I've been doing. Um, I'll try and make that quick because I know you want to hear about some astral projection stories. So uh, let's see here. In the last two months, two and a half months or whatever amount of time has passed, um, I'm now single. I'm no longer with my girlfriend. Uh, so I've been actually going out more. I've been doing something called cold approach pickup. I've been working on that in order to improve my social anxiety. Uh, I've been doing something called NoFap. Today is actually day 58 for me. Uh, I've also been counting calories as well. So I've lost about 16 pounds since September. So there's a lot of things going on in my life where things are improving, but at the same time, like I'm just constantly working towards refining like my life to create a better life for myself. Uh, as for my girlfriend, you know, we're still on good terms. I actually saw her the other day. We're actually going to see a movie tonight. So, I mean, that's great. It, it's cool. It's a good thing to keep on good terms with your exes. So, uh, let's see here. That's pretty much what's been going on in my life lately. And because of that, uh, I haven't really been focusing as much on astral projection. It's almost as if like with doing NoFap, basically look it up. Uh, I'm basically abstaining from uh, pornography and masturbation. Uh, maybe those of you in the spiritual community would recognize it more as uh, semen retention. But basically I, lo I owe a lot of my drive right now, a lot of my motivation, a lot of my inspiration from actually retaining uh, my semen, from refusing to uh, ejaculate. I mean, of course, like the exception with uh, what I'm choosing to do with this challenge is actually like, if I do choose to have sex, then that's fine. But I do abstain from porn and masturbation. And I highly recommend you try it. It's actually like a really great thing if you're looking for that extra drive and motivation in life. So let's move on to uh, astral projection. Let's move on to those experiences. So there's been several, a couple experiences that I've uh, been through in the last two, two and a half months. And uh, these experiences have taught me a lot about, I guess, the nature of astral projection and the nature of uh, how I'm going to learn astral projection uh, in, as the time passes in my life. So I've actually been experiencing uh, traveling to like certain types of realms that are very dark and very ominous. So basically I would experience the vibrations and when I would wake up or when I would like when things would become clear in the astrals, I would notice and I would see that I was in a realm that felt overall ominous, overall having an underlying threat that isn't immediately apparent. So basically, uh, these realms, they're a little bit intimidating to navigate. It's like, imagine fog. Imagine fog, right? Imagine the density of fog. Imagine how sometimes you can't really see through it. Imagine like Silent Hill type of fog. But imagine that that fog was completely comprised of darkness. That fog was completely comprised of shadow. So in these realms, I would see all of this shadow kind of like lingering in the corners. I'd see this shadow kind of like lingering and like drifting around me. And when I was in these realms, I would just feel very intimidated because I would just, I would just not want to run into anything. Uh, that was my initial response. I would be thinking like, oh my God, like, it feels like a monster is about to jump out and grab me or attack me or whatever. Uh, thankfully, that has never happened. Well, let me get to some future experiences. 
But so far, nothing extreme has happened. Uh, let's see. I would have a lot of moments where even though it wouldn't be an out-of-body experience, I would wake up in the void. I would wake up, not wake up, but I would become conscious in this black sort of void, uh, in this sort of void that's kind of almost murkyish in color. Uh, I would wake up in, or I would become conscious in this area that's not exactly being fully conscious awake and not exactly being fully deep asleep. So I would become aware of these voids and uh, it's actually like a peaceful place. I would just feel like I'm floating. I would just feel like I'm just so relaxed. Uh, if I were to compare it to something, I would almost compare it to being inside the womb. I don't know what it's like to be in my mother's womb, but if I were to remember what that were like, I would compare it to this. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Other experiences, other main points of these experiences, uh, I was able to actually, I'll call it phasing. I was able to phase out of one astral experience and into another just through pure intention. I was able to phase, like, I would end up in this ominous realm and because I didn't like that realm and because that realm had doors and because I had absolutely no interest in going past those doors, uh, I would choose to, I actually chose to phase out of it just by thinking, just by desiring to leave that place. So uh, basically, just through pure intent and pure focus, I was able to actually phase from that astral experience back into the vibrations. And from experiencing the vibrations, I was actually able to go into a completely different astral experience. So anyways, those are mainly the points that I wanted to touch up on. Uh, there's a little bit more that happened, but those are like really small details. Uh, I'm gonna get into more detail with this uh, recent experience that I actually uh, went through about two weeks ago, about three weeks ago. This one was actually very interesting. And I would compare the quality of this experience almost to my last vlog, uh, you know, behind the astral door or whatever I decided to name it. So in this experience, in this experience, again, I woke up in the void. I became conscious in the void. I became aware that I was in that state between full conscious awareness and deep unconscious sleep. So when I became aware, I decided to induce the vibrations. Oh yeah, side note. The night before when I was meditating, uh, it was interesting because I could actually feel uh, my third eye area, my pineal gland area, build up pressure just while I was meditating. Now, I can't induce the vibrations through meditation alone, but uh, the way I imagined it, the way I decided to perceive this is that what I did was I thought I could flex this little pressure building up in here uh, kind of similar to flexing your PC muscle, kind of like Kegels. Uh, just look up those exercises. Uh, so basically, I ended up flexing that muscle. I ended up flexing that area. So I believe that flexing that area actually contributed to helping me to experience the vibrations the next day. Because when I entered that void area, uh, that state between consciousness and deep sleep, I was able to uh, feel the pressure build up and I was able to release the pressure that comes in the form of the vibrations. So I ended up experiencing the vibrations all over my body. And I would have to consider this to be one of the most psychedelic type of experiences that I've had with these vibrations. Because while I experienced the vibrations, not only was I feeling the feeling of just floating around, I saw all these different psychedelic type colors, like of mainly whites and blues and all these different blue uh, lines just and these different shapes of lines just kind of like hovering around me and Basically, I just enjoyed the experience. I just laid back um, It's actually good that I took a break for you know the past You know however however long time has passed because it allowed me to actually Enjoy the experience it actually allowed me to let go and experience the experience without trying to influence it too much so basically, the vibrations started 
to tone down, right? It started to tone down and everything started to become black. Everything started to become dark. But then as the experience went on, uh, the darkness kind of faded away. And then I ended up becoming conscious in this room. I was still laying in bed and I was surrounded by these four absolutely gorgeous women. And you can, you can guess what I did. Nah, I'm joking. Uh, I totally didn't do anything with them. I totally wanted to, believe me. But as I was about to, something felt off. Something told me that I shouldn't do it. So I actually ended up leaving the room. I ended up leaving the room and I entered through this doorway. The doorway ended up leading into a hallway. And this hallway, again, was more ominous. It was a very dark hallway, uh, very dimly lit, but I didn't feel too threatened about it. Uh, I, was feel, I was starting to actually feel more familiar with these ominous places, so I decided to just go through it. So I went through the hallway. I went through the hallway, and I uh, went down these set of stairs. Uh, everything just seemed normal, relatively normal other than being in this strange astral ominous realm, uh, I went down this other set of stairs. Now, what was different about this other set of stairs was that it led down into an area that was enveloped by complete pitch black darkness. You could see absolutely nothing in this pitch black darkness. But for some reason, I decided to go down the stairs. But halfway through going down the stairs, uh, I heard this loud roar like kind of like a lion. And uh, what I assumed it to be was either some form of demon or some form of astral entity, but basically it, w it just roared at me and it was so loud. And uh, I instantly actually started to feel fear. So I decided to back up the stairs and the thing just keeps roaring at me, just like, rawr. And uh, I, I just go up the stairs I go up to the side of the stairs and uh, I don't know, it's interesting because in this astral realm, uh, whatever this realm was, I was feeling my heart almost beating out of my chest. I was feeling such deep fear. But then for some reason, uh, my mind went back to what I've learned. And basically what I learned was astral entities ain't shit. They can't do anything to you. They really can't. They can only do things to you if you believe they can and if you choose them to. So this is very interesting because for like a split second, for about like two to three seconds, I was actually able to get rid of the fear. Like the fear actually completely dissipated. Like my heart stopped beating. I actually felt calm. This only lasted for several seconds, but then the fear came back when the thing roared again. So I decided to yell as well and I just, made this really big, really loud roar toward this entity thing. And uh, after I let it out, it just shut the fuck up. It just became super quiet. It never even uh, yelled up again after that. So yeah, uh, I, basically, I basically just scared it off, maybe. I, I, did, I didn't go down the stairs. I didn't go down the stairs to find out. I just chose to go back up the stairs. So. I went back up the stairs. And uh, what's interesting is in these environments, sometimes if you leave a location and come back to that location, things will change. So when I went back up the stairs, there were actually more different sets of stairs for me to climb. Now, after going up a couple uh, stairs, I saw this little boy, this little like, uh, I think he could have been like Asian or Chinese or whatever. Uh, I saw this little boy and uh, he came up to me. He wasn't frightening, he wasn't scary, but he did make me feel a little uncomfortable. So he came up to me and uh, he was looking up to me and he, he was saying like, daddy, daddy, and then he started following me. So I start running up the stairs and he just keeps on chasing me. So um, I have this fear response to him. Like I'm, I mean, I'm not super afraid, I'm just like, what the fuck is this thing? Like this thing kind of creeps me out. Uh, so as it was running up the stairs, I just decided to kick it. Uh, and then it, it 
falls down the stairs. Uh, I actually start to feel kind of guilty for doing that, but it just gets up as if it wasn't hurt. So uh, I keep running up the stairs and eventually uh, I lose it. Eventually the, the little child thing like disappears. Uh, so then at this point, uh, I'm actually feeling a little, a little bit more on the fear side. And I'm just thinking to myself, you know what? I'm just gonna go back to that room. I'm gonna find those girls and I'm gonna have fun. Uh, I keep going up the stairs, but uh, I don't see them. Like I don't see the door that I came through. I just keep seeing all these different stairs. And eventually like I go all the way up to the point where I just wake up. So this is all interesting. It's all interesting stuff. Uh, the main points that I want to take from this experience that I want to relay to you is basically like each time that you go into the astrals, each time that you feel the astrals on a, on a great experience, you start to understand it more. I don't know why, but while I was in that room with those women or entities or whatever they were, I felt it wasn't in the form of words. It wasn't in the form of images, but there were memories coming back to me. Like memories, like in the form of emotions, kind of telling me about what this experience was, what it was about, and how to navigate it. And basically what it told me, if I could translate it into words, was basically, if you can go into the astrals enough times, if you can get a feel for the astrals enough times, you don't have to logically understand it, but you will begin to emotionally understand it. And the more that you understand the astrals, not on a logical level, but on an emotional level, the more that you'll be able to influence the uh, outcomes of your experience, the more that you'll be able to navigate your experience and be able to choose the experiences that you want to experience in the astrals. More interesting points that I want to touch up on uh, before uh, wrapping this up. Basically, going through doors. Doors aren't exactly doors. Uh, I believe that doors possibly are uh, representations of different portals into different areas. Uh, it only appears in the form of a door because that's our uh, physical mind, our conscious mind, making sense of what that thing is. Uh, what that portal is so it appears in the form of a door so anytime you enter a door uh, it may not logically end up on the other side to uh, to what you thought was on the other side it could end up on a completely different realm uh, again referencing phase evolution uh, uh, the guy talks about how basically like before entering a door he would just like feel emotionally the place that he wanted to go to. He would envision the place he wanted to go to. And usually when he opened the door, a place similar to or the exact place that he envisioned or felt would end up on the other side of that door. So yes, doors are forms of portals. Stairs also. Stairs are more of our uh, conscious physical mind interpreting Okay, um, I'm kind of taking a leap here, kind of interpreting uh, levels of consciousness. So when I would move down the stairs, I would be traveling deeper, possibly into my own subconscious mind or subconscious in general, whatever that subconscious may be, whether it actually is my mind or it's a part of something bigger. It's kind of hard to verbalize this. It's kind of hard to put this into words. Um, and uh, moving up the stairs, kind of is a representation of going up and rising in consciousness. Uh, I believe that's why I ended up waking up when I uh, uh, kept going up the stairs. So uh, that's, those are my main points of uh, these experiences so far. Uh, so if there was anything else that I wanted to touch up on, uh, maybe it would be, you know what, two things, two things. Uh, I wanna talk about if you've been trying this for a long time and you haven't been getting any results, a uh, suggestion on what to do, and two, um, my kind of plans for this channel. So one, if you've been trying this for a very long time, one of the best ways to ever learn anything is to learn from someone who is experienced. 
to learn from someone who knows what they're doing. So what I would actually recommend is uh, finding a mentor or actually uh, there are these boot camps going on. Like uh, I know Robert Monroe, uh, the Robert Monroe, uh, what was it? The Robert Monroe Institution. The Robert Monroe Institution offers uh, week-long classes. I, I think it ends up at around like 10K. But if you're very serious about like learning this stuff, then I highly recommend that you check that out. Like if you want to learn faster so that you can have someone like an outside perspective kind of looking at what you may possibly be doing wrong. Uh, if you're possibly even in the right time of your life to be practicing astral projection, that's another point I want to touch up on. So basically, uh, the direction of this channel, direction of this channel, I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be posting as much anymore. I will continue the post because I do want to keep accumulating like experiences on this channel uh, when it comes to astral projection. I think that's very important. For now, at this time in my life, my focus is kind of going more towards like coding and programming and uh, improving my social life because I was actually like seriously, seriously like depleting my social life. I wasn't focusing on it at all. I was focusing purely on spirituality and I was actually developing like a huge amount of social anxiety. It was actually producing a lot of loneliness and depression. I owe a lot of my loneliness and depression to, uh, you know, not following NoFap and not going out and socializing and emotionally connecting with other people. Remember people, like you may be into spirituality. Spirituality is wonderful. But remember, we, I guess, chose to exist within this physical realm for a reason. We chose to experience this realm because we wanted experiences ultimately. We wanted to learn. So learn. Go out and learn. Spirituality is just one aspect of life. Remember to pay attention to your health. Remember to pay attention to uh, your social life. Remember to constantly keep on learning, uh, etc., etc. Okay, so, um, God, there was another point that I wanted to touch up on. What was that? So one of the last points that I wanted to touch up on was actually if you are even in the right time of your life to even learn astral projection. Now, what's interesting, what I have to say uh, about this is that I believe that, so Robert Monroe talks about like a higher self, like a part of his consciousness that exists in the uh, others or a part of his consciousness that exists in the astral realm. Like this sort of consciousness is aware of the bigger picture. This sort of consciousness is aware of uh, everything that's going on. It's aware of past lives. It's aware of uh, the path that you chose to take before even being born and stuff like that, if you believe in that stuff. Um, for now, I guess you can interpret like a uh, higher self as, I don't know, like a like your best self, uh, I don't know, do your research. But anyways, uh, this highest self has your best interests uh, for you. It has your best interests in for you as possible. So basically, if you're trying to learn astral projection at a time in your life where you're not meant to, then this higher self will actually prevent you from actually accessing that state where you can astral project. Uh, I believe that there's a possibility that there are other areas of your life that need attending to. So perhaps there's uh, certain goals that you need to accomplish in your life, certain things that you need to achieve, certain experiences you need to go through before you'll be ready to even explore an astral projection. Because think about it. It's like, if you were to randomly master astral projection today, uh, any hidden base desires, any like certain uh, emotions that you haven't come to terms with in real life will just kind of blow up like once you're in the astrals. Like, I don't know, like maybe you'll be running around the astrals and all you want to do is have astral sex. Maybe you'll be running around the astrals and all you'll be experiencing are negative entities and ominous places, me, and uh, maybe experiencing just negative situations in general. So 
Uh, that's a possibility. I don't completely know. I'm just taking what I know, like in my experiences and uh, kind of like coming up with a possibility. So anyways, uh, that's pretty much it for a uh, higher self when it comes to not being at the right time or the right place or the not or for being not in the right time of your life to learn astral projection. You know what's really cool? It's almost been an entire year since I first started studying and learning astral projection. Because as of last year, 2016, I actually began studying and trying to attempt astral projection uh, in the beginning of December. And the beginning of December is actually a couple days from now. So maybe I'll upload a next video on uh, what I've learned in one year of astral projection. So that's something to possibly look forward to. So if I am going to continue on uh, uploading videos, which I will do every now and then, because my life is kind of like focusing on other aspects of my life right now, uh, I will be posting not just about astral projection, but about self-actualization and uh, things that will help other people with, uh, or help you with, uh, your uh, with improving your life so wrapping things up that's pretty much why i haven't been uploading in a while uh, that's what i've been up to lately uh, those were my recent astral experiences but seriously thank you so much for watching my videos and if you are new to this channel and you liked what i had to talk about feel free to click the subscribe button below feel free to like the video and if you happen to have any questions comments uh, feel free to comment in the section below and I will see you next time. Peace.